Billy Compton was the manager, and this is why I want to tell a story ultimately about Billy Compton. And he, uh, that old Billy Compton would look down through there, and you'd see him looking at you, and you'd be like, dude. It's Wait, like his, totally Orwellian. Would, it was like the Panopticon. He would be sitting you know, there watching you guys. Watching us to make like sure. He's sitting in the back room of the market. Yeah, watching in the upstairs, the, looking the down across room. the store, yeah, yeah through God. the two-way mirrors to make sure everyone is doing That's this. some satisfying work. And we had secret shoppers come in at least once a week, you know, and that they would evaluate this. But then we had these things called huddles. And I don't want this to seem racist. This, I'm, this is the best that I can impersonate this guy. And he did speak this way. But so he would, he would have these huddles. It was his idea. So all of a sudden, we're working on the intercom. We hear... Tension Safeway employees, huddle up. Time to huddle up. Let's huddle up. So we'd have to run to the back room. We'd run to the back room, and he'd like, you know, closer, closer. And we'd all get in this, like, you know, circle, like a like it's a huddle, a football game. And then oh he would start saying, God. like, okay, it's summertime. What's going to sell? What's going to sell? Coke, Pepe, Frito-Lay. They'll pay us money. And then, like, we're sitting there, you know, we're just trying to get the shit stocked on the shelves, and this guy's telling oh, you this, God. and you're like, this is fucked up, right? And then, <laughs> and then he's he was so condescending that there's this kid Eli who's this bagger. He's a total shit for brains, and, and he looks and he's telling him he's like, "Who here want to tell me about gain sharing? Gain sharing and gain sharing was that if we got enough secret shopper reports that were just like glowing in their report at the end of the year, we'd get like an extra five cents tacked on to every two hundred dollars we earned Ooh. or something like this. And then so. He, he would break it down and remind us that we, we stood to gain another, what, three bucks at the end of the year. <laughs> and then he looks around and he's like, tell me what it means. And then he goes, he goes, even Eli knows what that means. Mo money, mo money, mo money, mo money. <laughs> and and Eli's he, all looking like, yeah, I know what it means. Did he know what it means or was he just I don't know. I have no uh, idea. Huh? But it was just rad because, like, it's bad enough to have to talk to someone and do all that. But then when that's in the background, you know, you can be, like, Called to the huddle at any moment. <laughs> Since it's just a perfect opportunity. Yeah. Back in that same safe way, and you're going to see the connection. No, this has everything to do with you and okay. the witcher. All in right. that same safe way, there was a guy who would clean the meat department at the end of the night. He would come in and he would clean the meat department. I don't know where this is. And I would going. always talk to this dude. And, and I went back there one night and I was like, hey, did someone was just asking for you. You know, this this woman was just asking about you. And he was immediately getting all excited and lit up. And so I proceeded to describe her. And, Basically, what I was doing was describing the Kool Aid Man, but without <laughs> saying it was the Kool Aid Man. <laughs> so you I'm mean going, like the guy with the? <laughs> I was like, she was wearing. So I started off, you know, she was wearing a red dress, and she was really like curvy. You know? <laughs> she was really curvy, and so I just. Oh just, yeah. And then he, yeah, so he would go describing. I mean, he, he'd ask for more information, and I'd provide it, and it would just. She kept getting bigger and bigger. So I said, well, she was. Yeah, she was asking all about you, and so that was the setup. Then I went to this girl that I knew who who was one of the cats. Years and I told her, "Hey, here's the extension for the meat department. You got to call right now and just say, you know." So she calls him and she's like, "Hey, I was, you know, just doing a little shopping and I, I saw you back there, and I want to know." And this guy had kids, you know, he had a wife and kids, and, and he, she's like, "I want to, oh, I want to come in tonight and meet you. Can you stay there till like, you know, midnight?" And he normally gets out of there at ten or something, and so. Sure enough, all night I kept going back. He's back there whistling and shit. Like, he's all, like mopping the meat department floor, like whistling all kinds of songs and crap, dude. <laughs> he was all bummed out. Oh, that's that mean. Go. That's sad. So, yeah, anyway, there you go. That's, he was the probably that's, that's you and the it Witcher. Was the first prospect. That's, you for... are him, Jeff. Yeah, I was him. I was that You're guy. in the meat department. Uh, Mr. Elliot, you were going to. I know the kids were going crazy for your Safeway stories. Oh shit! You want to start us, up, start us <laughs> off with more? Well, because um, I saw some people were thinking that the, the the calls in the beginning were now some regular feature, and it just happened that the first one was sort of un you know unpremeditated and just happened, mm. and then I did one more. But that's not a uh, a regular feature. But there is a call that I made that fits in with Safeway in that story I told. So, I mean. That guy, Billy Compton, old Billy Compton I worked with, he was tough to deal with. Wait, but was then, he the guy, the Peppy? He was the Coke Peppy, Peppy Frito-Lay. Okay. And he, he, <laughs> he was tough to work with, but he was kind of like, I don't know, I could forgive him. I could forgive his faults. But there was this other guy there, Steve, and he was huge. We called him, you know, Steve-O at the time. That was, you know, it just made sense. So, but like, as in... Steve, oh, he's unbelievable. <laughs> Eats so much, it's inconceivable. <laughs> Steve Did you sing this in front of his? No, to, to we'd, him? no. We'd, every time you turn around. And he, uh, <laughs> it's weird, tough like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so this dude, he was huge, right? And he would always talk about how he was in the Navy. 
So we just like kind of privately wonder like what he possibly did, like if he served as displacement on a submarine, you know, like they let him out when they wanted to come to the surface, and then they'd string him back in when they wanted to, to visit the depths. But so eventually, I I got into a tip with him, and again, it was over you know following their customer service policy, and I just said, "All right, Steve-O, I'm out of here," and then I just walked out. But after that, that wasn't good enough. I had to let Steve-O know indirectly, as it were. How much I, I appreciate I appreciated him, so I started off with a series of of calls. I told one before, and that was where what we did to the donut case. So I won't revisit that. Most people should recognize that when I say the donut case. Um, but then I called like the bakery one time, and I and I made a series of calls to every department. But so I called the the bakery and I said, you know, hi, I'm. My name is, you know, Ron Sadler. I'm calling from Allied Signal, and we're about to celebrate our fifth anniversary being in business. And what we want is, you know, we're going to have a company picnic, and I want the biggest cake that you've ever made. <laughs> it's like, the thing is, this is really important to us, and this cake needs to show, you know, it needs to, to represent Allied Signal's power, the fact that we're growing, and I know that you're an artist, and I want <laughs> you to, to show me how much of an artist you really are. And he, and here's the thing, you know, we're you knock this one out. I'm going to come in there and we're going to buy everything. You know, we're going to go, we're going to get our fruit there. We're going to go to your deli and get everything else there. And I'm going to tell your manager that all of it is because of you. So what I want you to do, and I've seen, I want a whole city basically. And I've seen you've got ballpark <laughs> cakes, you know, for kids. It's like a baseball field. I want that in the middle of this town. I want a, I want a big building. If you got to put frosting on cardboard, that's okay. But like a shining beacon for all the city in the middle, allied signal. Make this as, as many stories as you can. It was like, <laughs> I just kept telling her all the stuff to put in it, you know, everything that was like, what, what other kind of cakes do you have? We could just take stuff from all those. You know, we can make a garden in there. And then I just kept saying, you know, how like, I, I know you're an artist. And she was like, no. No, I'm not at all. But anyway, <laughs> so I followed through with the whole thing. And, of course, I still knew people that worked there. And they actually made this thing. And it was the saddest piece of crap that they've ever seen. <laughs> with, like, the junkiest slate gray, you know, some, like, uh, Stalin condominium type looking thing <laughs> in the middle. And it had the ballpark and everything. And, of course, no one picked it up. So it went to the break room and it helped out all the employees. They got to eat it. And that was. <laughs> so, wait, how did that take revenge on the fat? Team? Yeah. Anyway, what did you need? I made him eat more cake. What did he do? What did he, <laughs> I don't know. What did he do to you other than be a big fat guy? Yeah, just the usual stuff. Their their draconian policies about. Oh, he was like watching a, you every minute. Oh, uh, he was. Sure so he was a boss. You're loving everyone. Yeah, he was another boss. Okay. They're, he they're wasn't not, a peer that you were just picking. Oh no, no, they were. Fat. The stores okay. were always you know run by you know a multitude of managers and they all work uh -huh. together. Some are better than others, you know and. So, Jeff, does this make you nervous that one day you will be the butt of some <laughs> Sean Elliott cake-making story? 